Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So we have talked about the Pandora's box before. Actually, one of my first videos ever on the channel was about the Pandora's box. Now the Pandora's box comes in a lot of forms. They have sort of the tabletop one, it's two players. Uh, they have these boards which you can put in arcade cabinets. Uh, and they have like Pandora's box bar tops. They have a lot of them and they come preloaded with a lot of games. And basically this is an emulation box that you can hook up and it really, you just power it on and it's plug and play for the most part. Once you wire it up, and you have access to a bunch of games. And then the underlying technology just runs emulators under the cover. So it is an emulation device. Now there's a lot of controversy about should you put one of these in an arcade cabinet? Now, I have become over time more of a purist and want to maintain the original look of the arcade games, the original feel of the arcade games, everything down to controls and buttons and all those things, the CRT monitor. But if you did have something like a fighting game laying around like a Street Fighter, would it maybe make sense to do this? And could you put this in there without truly modifying the cabinet? Meaning I'm not changing any of the buttons and controls or anything like that. Just sort of giving myself access to more games. I don't know, let's find out. Oh my gosh, I forgot to mention, this episode is sponsored by Sonic the Hedgehog Energy Drink. Wait, what? This has 300 milligrams of caffeine? I'm gonna be totally tripping balls after this episode. Okay, so before we go down the path of doing this, you have to understand something. Typical JAMA edge connectors look like this, except these Pandora's boxes are not JAMA. They're actually Chinese JAMA, sometimes referred to as CHAMA. The pinouts are actually different. So in order to stick a Pandora's box just into like some sort of Capcom CPS-1 or CPS-2 running arcade system, you're gonna need this adapter from Mike's Arcade. This is a CHAMA to JAMA adapter. And the, and the reason why this is awesome is because most of the Street Fighter games if you're working with CPS 1 and 2, had kick harnesses. Well, the kick harness can plug in right here. So all six of your buttons on your arcade cabinet can map to this device now because they, they do a completely different pinout. So if you're gonna do it net new, you could just run a JAMA harness and wire it all yourself. But I'm not really condoning you to do that. I'm, does that even make sense? I'm not supporting you doing that, whatever. All I'm saying is if you're gonna put it in a running machine and you wanna put it alongside, let's say, your Street Fighter PCB to get access to more games, you're gonna need this adapter and then you can literally just plug and play. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Okay, so inside the cabinet, you can find your JAMA board and you'll see you've got your JAMA harness connected to it. And then down here, that's where your kick harness connects. So what we're gonna need to do is obviously power down your arcade cabinet. Then you're gonna disconnect the JAMA edge connector. Okay, now you've got that right there in your hand and then we're gonna remove this kick harness. Sometimes this takes a little bit of effort. All right, there it is, the kick harness is, is out. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna get the Pandora's box. We're gonna need that. And keep in mind, there are several of these. There's only a certain certain ones that will support a standard resolution arcade monitor. So I'm gonna put a link in the description to the ones that do, because some of these have JAMA edge connectors, but they do not actually output the right video signal for your monitor. Okay, so let me go grab the CHAMA to JAMA connector, and then we'll hook this thing up. Okay, so I got the edge connector. We're gonna put this, uh, you're gonna see there's a component side uh, or a part side and a solder side. You're gonna put the component side in like this because the components side for the Pandora's box is this top side with the logo. So we're gonna just squeeze it on right there, and there it is. Then we're gonna get the kick harness. So the kick harness has this little, little lip right here. This lip sits under that lip on that side. So it's just gonna simply go on like this. So you're gonna see, I'll do it from that angle so you can see it. It's gonna go on like this. Oops, I could get it on. It goes on like this, and then you'll see it'll actually close in on that lip right there. Now, on this side, you're gonna put the part side facing up here. And these uh, JAMA connectors are keyed, so, so you can't really get it wrong. And there you go. So now, I'm gonna put this just right here for now, since we're not gonna permanently mount this as a solution. But like I said, you could have sort of your primary PCB mounted there and you could just switch back and forth if you wanted to. Now there are JAMA switchers you can buy too. So 
if you wanted to get something like a JAMA switcher, you could certainly do that. And then you could just switch back and forth usually with some keystrokes or something. Um, I, I can't remember, I haven't played with those JAMA switchers in a while. It's like you hold player one or player two at the same time for a couple seconds. I think Mike's Arcade sells those too. I'll have a link in the description to a JAMA switcher if you want to try to do a solution like that. But yeah, so we've just installed it. That's all we have to do. Now we can go power it on and we should be greeted with the Pandora's Box DX welcome screen. Okay, if we did this right, when I power it on, it should have the Pandora's Box DX splash screen. Now, because I put the Pandora's Box in the volume control, it will go over the JAMA edge connector for your speakers, but there's a little um, potentiometer knob on the Pandora's box, which will adjust the volume. And there we go. So the thing I have noticed though, depending on your monitor settings, sometimes I have to fix the vertical and horizontal positioning. Like it's, this is pretty good. It's almost like the horizontal position needs to come down a tiny bit. I've noticed that on a couple monitors when I put these in, you just have to lower the horizontal position. You can do that on the back of, of most monitors, just as usually a, a horizontal position pot. You just adjust it and then you'll get this down to where you can see the whole thing. The board in general will be coin operated, but you can just go into the settings and set it to free play. I would suggest you do that because then you don't have to insert coins. My Street Fighter is actually still set up to accept coins. I haven't actually put it on free play. But anyway, so yeah, at this point, let's dive into this interface and I'll show you what you're gonna get with this. Okay, before we dive in, I just wanna say, why why am I like kind of okay or supportive of, of this type of a solution? Because you're not altering the Street Fighter cabinet in any way. So you can easily return it right back to the original Street Fighter board. But I can totally see where someone that has limited space and they just have a single game system may want access to more games. And why I love this is that you're not, like I said, I know I'm repeating myself, but you're not altering the original cabinet at all. You can use it just the way you would before and your button configurations and everything else are gonna stay the same. Now, this is the control panel I need to fix. So yes, I know everyone's gonna beat me up on the colors being wrong and reversed. Uh, I haven't fixed it yet, but I'm going to. This actually is an arcade I picked up on Arcade Pickers episode one. So I've been enjoying it the way it is, but it needs some minor restoration work. So once you install this, what does it gain you? Well, you get thousands of arcade games. You get fighters, you get shmups, you get you get um, side-scrolling beat em, beat em ups, you get a whole bunch of different things. So there's, there's a whole bunch of different games here. And the other thing that you get access to is with this many games, you're probably wondering, well, how do I even find anything? So you can just press the player one start button and go to search, and you can actually search for a specific game. So if I wanted Simpsons, for instance, I can type in S-I-M. Yeah, so and then hit okay, and then uh, and you can see it, it brought me to The Simpsons. So I can quickly launch that. And like I said, this is all emulation based, so it's just gonna launch the emulator and you're gonna start playing that game. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool. And the other thing that's really neat is, let's say I start playing. I love this feature because me being someone that, uh, you know, ha has a lot going on and just like everyone else that watches the channel, have kids and everything and a family and things you need to, need to take care of on a regular basis, sometimes you can't play all the time. So let's say I'm in the middle of a game, hit and hold player one start and then I can actually state, save my state. So I can have save state so I can come back to it later. So if I wanna go back to it later, I can hold player one start again and then go to load state and it's gonna load right back where I was before. So pretty cool, like, I'll, I don't know, I just think that's a pretty neat feature to have. So you have search functionality, you have save state functionality. If you wanna get back to the menu to choose a different game, you just, again, hit player one start, hit exit, and you can go right back to the menu. Again, you have the search function, so you can go here. They do have, categories so they have like your action games your fighting games your sports games puzzle games like puzzle they'll they'll have things like pac-man or tetris and stuff like that there's some 3d they have a title called 3d games which is is like polygonal games so if there's any kind of fighters based on polygonal graphics some of them some of them work well some of them don't you just it's, it's hit or miss you know not everything is going to work amazingly well on here but, uh, but it does give you access to a lot of games. So like for instance, if you look at my recently played games, I was playing The Simpsons, I was playing Track and Field, believe it or not, Track and Field works. Um, Smash TV, you can play Smash TV. You know, some of the control layouts are not gonna be perfect. Uh, it has Streets of Rage and you guys know I love that. You could play Donkey Kong, you could play X-Men, Bucky O'Hare. So I was kind of going through and just playing some of the games I wanted to play, you know. I was Having fun with playing some Rastan, Golden Axe, Sunset Riders is a popular one. Final Fight is one that I often play quite a bit. So yeah, so you have access to all these games and because it's on free play, uh, when, you, when you access the game, you just pretty much hit start and you, and you start playing the game. 
you can it supports one and two players right off the bat you don't need to do anything and because the kick harness is there it's going to support all six of your action buttons but yeah it's uh it's a pretty cool solution and like i'm saying uh, you're not going to get the best emulation in the world obviously the original pcb is going to be your best bet but with a solution like this you now have access to a lot more games uh, on your cabinet now i, I would not I, I don't really, I'm not a big fan or a supporter of someone that just hacks their system and makes it a multi-cade, you know, by the hacking the control panel and putting, you know, track balls and all sorts of nonsense like that. But it could be cool for a system like this where you're not affecting the original control panel at all and you, you have access to a lot more, a lot more games. Now to show you that the original Street Fighter games and things like that work and all, all the buttons work, I'll just uh, go to... I'll go to my search functionality, I'll type in Street Fighter. And there's a lot, you get a lot of access to a lot of Street Fighters. You get EX, you get EX2, you get Zero. So you have a, you have a whole bunch of Alpha 2, a bunch of games. But because this, this system was an original Street Fighter, I'm gonna go find the original Street Fighter Champion Edition. They have Rainbow and all the mod hacks, all the ROM hacks are in here too. So that is also cool if you wanna play all the Street Fighter games, you can play them all from here. Now, I don't have Champion Edition on this cabinet. This is actually a World Warrior cabinet, so that it allows me to play uh, Champion Edition as well, so pretty cool. So you can see you have access to all the buttons on Street Fighter, and that was that's what's most important, and that kick harness is the key. So if you get that little adapter, that Chama to Jamma adapter, you're gonna be all set. So that's an important piece of the puzzle, because if you try to plug it in, you're not gonna have access to all the buttons, and you're not gonna be able to play all the games that this Pandora's box has to offer. The other secret would be making sure that you, oh crap. The other, <laughs> I do need to replace these buttons and sticks, and that's not why I'm playing bad. I'm just playing bad because I, I'm playing bad. Oh my gosh, if I die here, that's so lame. <laughs> Come on, dude. <laughs> Don't do me like this, E-Honda. Well, I'm a total bonehead and I forgot to tell everyone about this. So this is the Pandora's Box DX manual and the default resolution for the Pandora's Box is 1280 by 720. So that obviously won't work for the CRT. So what you'll have to do is there's a little button on the back of the Pandora's Box. And what you'll do is you'll press and hold that and then power up the, your arcade. And what you wanna do is you might have to do it several times, but if you do it the first time and the light is green, you wanna do it until, so power it back down, hold the button, power it back up, and when the light is yellow, then you've done it right. And then at that point, uh, it will work on the CRT. So out of the box, if you plug it in and turn it all on, it won't work. You just have to make sure that yellow indicator's there, and all you have to really do is just go to page six of your Pandora's Box DX manual. Uh, if I, This may change, but whatever. Just go to the part of the manual that talks about the resolution and if you forgot or if that's not clear. It just says resolution settings and that's it. You should be good to go. So there you have it guys. It is a really simple solution and it gains you access to additional games. I love the save states. I like the search functionality and I love the fact that it supports CRTs because uh, that's just the way to go. If you're gonna do retro arcade gaming, you gotta you gotta do it on a CRT. So it's just it's a it's a pretty plug and play solution. As you saw, you do have to buy that additional um, Jamma to Chama Chama to Jamma adapter. But after you have that, it's you're you're good to go. So. I enjoy it. The save state thing is really cool because I've been playing certain games like Rastan and I try to, that's a hard game by the way. If you haven't played Rastan, it's a really hard game. But once you get to a certain point in Rastan, I'm like, maybe I should save it because I'm trying to hone and get better at that game and sometimes it's hard. So I just sort of, because that game makes you go back to the beginning. So it's kind of nice to progress through it. So regardless of if you have quarters and, and you can continue, it brings you back to the beginning. So it's kind of nice to start, you know, from a, from a better spot. There are some console games on here that translate well to arcade cabinets like Street Fighter 2. Now, believe it or not, Street Fighter 2 did have, and I've talked about this like a million times because I'm such a Street Fighter 2 guy, but Street Fighter 2 did have an arcade release on the Sega Megatech software or hardware. So just so you know, it, it did. So a lot of people will question me on that, but it's Streets of Rage 2 that was released on it, not Streets of Rage 1. But anyway, I think that game translates really well to an arcade cabinet. So, um, I mean, really it's the same kind of a game type as like an X-Men or a Simpsons or something like that, or even like Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. So it, it follows that same kind of genre. So why not play that on your arcade cabinet? It's pretty cool. So if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. Put your comments below. I know there's gonna be some people that will, are gonna freak out and lose their mind over this topic, but some people have limited space and it's a cool option and you're not destroying the cabinet. You're just putting it alongside your original PCB. You're leveraging all of your buttons and sticks. So nothing really changes outside of getting access to more games. All right guys, that's it. And we will see you on the next one.